Aberdeen today, going along the Black History Trail. Come along with us. Let's go explore. Let's start our tour at the Aberdeen Visitors Bureau. The Bureau is located in the store building that you see before you behind that orange looking door. You can usually find the Black History Trail brochure and that rack attached to the side of the building. I'm going to take the tour in a little different order than what they have done in the brochure mainly because I really like the mural you see before you painted on the side of Cooperwood Station, which is located across the street from the Visitors Bureau. For more than 25 years, Roger Cooperwood's Central Gulf Service Station was a mainstay in the business community. Cooperwood was a native of Aberdeen. He attended Russ College and taught school before he served in the Army and got another degree at Wayne University in Michigan. He was always mechanically inclined and he started this business after he had been told he was overqualified for other jobs he applied for. Some of Mr. Cooperwood's civic contributions were he served five years on the police force, one term as a city alderman, and served on the board of several civic organizations while being a lay speaker at St. Peter United Methodist Church. The building is still known as the Cooperwood Building and the courtyard before you is known as the Cooperwood Courtyard. Merchant Row in Paradise Alley is located at Block Off Commerce on South Meridian Street. During the 1870s, this area was home to a former enslaved person named Sam Blevins. He was known as the Merchant Prince. He used woodworking skills that he learned as a slave to prosper in the cabinetry business. The sign over his store read groceries, coffins, and funeral supplies. He ran several businesses in this area, an ice cream saloon, and even a soda fountain. There's a little alley on the right where African Americans were allowed to socialize on Saturdays. The Aberdeen Blues mural was created in 2011 as an enhancement to the Mississippi Blues Trail marker. It also serves as an educational tool about Buckle White, Helen Wolf, and Albert King, all three great bluesmen from the Aberdeen area. Albert Nelson, known by his stage name Albert King, was an American blues guitarist and singer whose playing influenced many other blues and rock and roll guitarists. He's perhaps best known for his album Born Under a Bad Sign from 1967. He, B.B. King, and Freddie King are all known as the kings of the blues. He was a left-handed king known for his deep, dramatic voice. He was a large man with a smooth singing style and was once nicknamed the Velvet Bulldozer. He drove a bulldozer in one of his day jobs early on in his career. King was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame in 1983. King has also been ranked number 13 on Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Guitarists of All Time. Since his death, he's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That was in 2013. Booker T. Washington, or Bucka White, was a country blues, Delta blues artist that first recorded for Victor Records in 1930. Nine years later, he recorded for the folklorist John Lomax, such songs as Shake Em On Down and Po' Boy and Parchman Farm Blues, which was released in 1940. Bob Dylan covered his song Fixing to Die Blues and aided in the rediscovery of Buck White in 1963 by guitarist John Faye. 
Because of White's song entitled Aberdeen, Mississippi, Faye wrote a letter to White, addressed it to Bucka White, old blues singer, care of General Delivery, Aberdeen, Mississippi, thinking that maybe White still lived in the area nearby. The postcard was forwarded to White, where he lived and worked in Memphis, Tennessee, in a tank factory. Later in his life, he recorded with friends in the apartment in Memphis of Furry Lewis. He died in Memphis in February of 1977. In 1970, Led Zeppelin released the song, Hats Off to Harper. It was based in large part on White's Shake em Down Custard Pie. In 1975, they also referenced Shake em Down. In 1995, guitarist Kenny Wayne Shepard, on his debut album, Led Better Heights, covered White's Aberdeen, Mississippi as Aberdeen. Chester Arthur Burnett, better known as Howlin' Wolf, was a Chicago blues singer, harmonica player, and guitarist. He had a booming voice and an imposing physical presence. He's also one of the best known Chicago blues artists. Producer Sam Phillips has been quoted as saying, when I heard Howlin' Wolf, I said, this is for me. This is where the soul of man never dies. Cub Coda noted, no one can match Howlin' Wolf for the singular ability to rock the house down to the foundation while simultaneously scaring its patrons out of its wits. Some of his songs include Killing Floor, Smokestack Lightning, and Spoonful. Rolling Stone ranked him number 54 on its list of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time. The contribution of these men to blues music, rock and roll music, and just simply music in general just can't be overstated. One of my favorite quotes on the blues marker is a line from Buck White's Aberdeen. Aberdeen is my home, but the men's don't want me around. They know I will take these women and take them out of town. Now, as we leave the Blues Mural, we're going to make our way down the street to James Creek Missionary Baptist Church. It was located out in the country in what is known as the Derricot community until 2010 or so when it was moved here in order to save the building. James Creek Missionary Baptist Church was organized in the late 1800s, and it was what we call a brush arbor. That means that services were held outside until resources could be gathered, and the present building was constructed in 1905 in the Derricot community. It was moved to its current location in 2010 in order to save it. The property where it now sits is used for weddings, musical events, and community services. Now we move down Vine Street to show you the home of Professor J.R. Shivers and his wife, Minnie. Both were model citizens in Aberdeen during a very tumultuous time. They influenced the community through his activities as principal, and she was an English teacher. Now we move to the corner of Vine Street and North Franklin to the area where the Green Schoolhouse once stood. Constructed in 1912 and painted a dark green, thus the name the Green Schoolhouse, this was the only source of education for African Americans in the area. This led people from all around to board on the north side of town to take advantage of this opportunity. This is Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church located on the corner of North Franklin Street and Dr. R. E. Woodruff Street. This church was formed and built after tornado damaged First Missionary Baptist Church located on Matuba Street. Mr. Ralph Bradley donated 
the lumber materials for the building and is listed as an honorary deacon. His name is also listed on the cornerstone of the church. Around the corner from Pilgrim Rest, you see the home of Dr. R. E. Woodruff. He served the Aberdeen community from 1926 to 1979. He was an extremely important member of the community. He helped raise funds for educational and civic causes. He also gave one of his son's lives to the war in Vietnam. The first park for African Americans in Aberdeen, Newburger Park, was established in 1929 on land donated by Joseph Newburger, the president of the Federal Compress in Aberdeen. Dr. R. E. Woodruff and Dr. W. A. Evans raised funds to build a library at the park in 1939. Later in the 80s, the library was used as an American Legion post. First Missionary Baptist Church was organized in 1865 and the original building burned in 1890. Their structure was rebuilt but was destroyed by a tornado in 1920. Again, it was rebuilt on the same site. Part of the congregation broke away to form Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church, which you viewed earlier. The area around these churches became known as Baptistville, or simply to locals, the Ville. Bob Stovall owned and rented several properties in this area, which included apartment living, pool room entertainment, and the Silver Dollar Cafe. Westbrook's funeral home that you see here was formed in 1936, and in 1949, Westbrook's Grocery on down the street there on the right. The Masonic Temple Lodge, West Vine Street, is a fraternal organization whose goal is to make better men out of good men. It has served as a facility to mentor young men and women for the purpose of character building for the good of the community. Morgan Chapel CME Church was named for Mr. Joe Morgan, who donated the land for the church in 1924. The original building remained until 1961. In 66, the church hosted the formation of the local chapter of the NAACP with General Young as its first president. General Young's original home was the scene of racial violence when it was bombed and destroyed. This is the site of his later home where he maintained his office and his welding business. This is General Young Park. General Young joined Dr. Martin Luther King on his march in Selma and the march in Washington, D.C., where Dr. King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Even though he called himself a man of little formal education, General Young became a leader in civil rights in our area. General Young Park was established as a memorial to remind us of the dedicated life of a man who sought justice for all. The St. Rest Masonic Lodge has been a pillar of strength with the goal to recruit young men and women to become better role models within their community and to train them to become better servants in their houses of worship. Big Daddy and I hope you've enjoyed visiting the Aberdeen Black History Trail. I gotta be honest, I spent big portions of this video reading directly from the Black History Trail brochure that I got from the Aberdeen Visitors Bureau right across the street from this mural. We encourage you to come explore Aberdeen's African-American heritage for yourself.